Revelations chapter 2, verse 18, John Gill's exposition of the entire Bible, verse by verse. Being read by Dr. Peter John, brought to you by Discovering the Scriptures. Quote, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, of the city of Thyatira, see my note in Re Revelations chapter 1, verse 11. A church was formed here very likely by the Apostle Paul. Lydia was a native of this place who and her household were converted and baptized by him at Philippi. Acts chapter 16, verse 14. Through Epiphilius, E-P-I-P-H-A-N-I-U-S seems to grant that some heretics objected to the authority of this book, that they, there was no church at Thyatira when this letter was written. However, it is true. There was one in the second century, as the same writer observes, since, as he relates, it was overrun by the... It's C-A-T-A-P-H-R-Y-G-I-A-N heresy. In the 4th century, there was a bishop from Thyatira in the Council of Nice. And even in the 8th century, there was one E-S-A-I-A-S, -A, -A, a presbyter, who supplied the place of the bishop of Thyatira in another council at Nice. The Turks have now eight mosques in it, but there is not one Christian church or place of worship to be found in it who was the angel or pastor of this church at the writing of this epistle, is not certain. However, it is designed for all the ministers and churches in the interval this church represents and this period takes in the darkness, darkest and most superstitious times of popery under the Reformation. Thyatira is, a name, is the same as Thyatira. T-H-Y-G-A-T-I-R-A, which signifies a daughter, and it has its name as Stephanus Bezertius, that's B-Y-Z-A-N-T-I-U-S, says, from hence S-E-L-E-U-C-U-S, the son of N-I-C-A-N-O-R, being at war with L-Y-S-I-M-A-C-H-U-S, and hearing that he had a daughter born, called this city Thyagatara, that's T-H-Y-G-A-T-I-R-A, which was before called P-E-L-O-P-I-A. And S-E-M-I-R-A-M-I-S, which is a very fit name for this church and expresses the, uh, um, the, the feminists of it, when the Virgin Mary, whom the Romanists called the daughter of God, was more worshipped than her son and was not only made a partner with him in the business of salvation, but even set above him when there was such swarms of monks and friars and religious orders of several sorts as Franciscans and Dominicans who claimed her as their patroness, when such numbers of them clad themselves in coals and long garments that they looked more like women in hoods and petticoats than really men. Hence also the corrupt part of this church is signified by the woman Jezebel, the daughter of um, Ethabel, that's E-T-H-B-A-L, the Zidonian. And it should not be forgot that there was once a sheep pope, a woman that sat in the papal church, a whore in a literal sense. Wherefore, Antichrist or the popes of Rome are fitly called the great whore, the mother of harlots. Dr. Oh no, Mr. D-A-U-B-U-Z observes that the first Christian of Thyatira was a woman and the false prophets which first enticed the Christians to apostasy in this church were men of as Maximilia, Quintilia, and, and um, Basilica, to which I would add that according to Epiphilius, that among those heretics and which swallowed up this church, their bishops were women, 
and so were their presbyters or elders. And Dr. Smith is of opinion that the inhabitants of this place were, when heathen, were worshippers of the goddess Diana, so that, upon all accounts, the church here was a fit symbol of the effeminate church of Rome. These things saith the Son of God, who is truly, properly, naturally, and essentially the Son of God. This character Christ makes use of to assert his proper deity as being of the same nature and having the same perfections with his Father, as well as to command the greater regard to what he ordered to be written to the churches and chiefly in the opposition of the effeminate state of this church, it was time for him to take to him his highest name as expressive of his highest nature and to assert himself the Son of God when Mary, his mother according to the flesh, and who was but a mere creature, was called the daughter of God, and set upon a level with him, and even preferred upon him, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, quick and sharp, penetrating through the darkness of the state, seeing into, discovering and exposing the horrid actions and wickednesses of men, done in the dark, expressing fury, wrath, and vengeance against the Romish Antichrist and his followers, and may also design the light of the gospel doctrine which broke out in those times at certain seasons to the dispelling of popish darkness in some measures. See my note in Revelations 1.14. And his feet are like fine brass. In the description of Christ in Revelations 1.14, it is added as if they burned in a furnace. See my note on Revelations 1.14. And may denote the strength, stability, and support Christ gave his people while suffering for his sake, when the furnace and burning for him, which kind of death was much used in those times. Hence, Dr. Moore, to whom I am much obliged for many hints in this exposition of the epistles to the churches think that Thyatira is an allusion to Y-U-H-T-R-I-A which signifies altars for the burning orders as they are to God and they may be expressive of the burning of the saints, those sweet odors and they are to God and Christ with fire and faggot which was now practiced as in the other period, killing with the sword was chiefly used in the midst of which Christ was present, supporting his people. End of Revelation chapter 2, verse 18.